Hey there. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Panda wireless USB dongle um, and how to get it set up working with uh, Kali Linux in a virtual box. Uh, the device is generally plug and play, uh, but I have had some issues uh, getting it running on my virtual box, so I'm going to walk through the steps that I took in order to get it uh, properly working. Uh, real quick about the device itself, let's go to, let's see. Okay, so on Amazon, this is the device. It is a little wireless dongle, uh, and it's very cheap. I paid $22 for it. I guess it's now $18. Um, some people have had issues with it. I had a couple issues with it, but I was able to work through them. Uh, and because I was able to work through those issues, I think it's, it ends up being a really great value. Uh, one thing to note is that it's only 2.4 gigahertz. It doesn't run off the 5 gigahertz um, network as well. So um, keep in mind that constraint. Uh, I think for most purposes, 2.4 is fine, uh, at least for uh, testing and learning purposes. Uh, one other thing that I like about this uh, is beyond it, the fact that it's cheap is that it's pretty discreet. It does have a little antenna, but if you plug this into a laptop and you're out in a public area, it's not going to be too uh, too obnoxious. But once you start getting into uh, you know bigger devices, especially if it's got like a cable and you can put the device off to the side and it's got multiple antennas, uh, it starts looking um, a little bit obnoxious and it's, and it's not discreet and people are going to wonder what the hell you're doing. So I like the fact that it's discreet, it's small, it's portable, uh, and it's cheap. Uh, so I got this device and... Um, it was plug and play with my Windows 10 operating system. I was able to connect to my home network without problems. Uh, I've got a bare metal installation of Kali Linux on an old laptop. It was pretty much plug and play with, with that as well. However, on my VirtualBox instance of Kali Linux, it was only able to, I guess, recognize the device, but not properly use the device. So I had to, there were a couple extra steps I had to go through to get it properly working. So let's, let's work through that. Uh, first, we're going to bring up VirtualBox. Now, if you don't have VirtualBox installed, um, it's pretty easy to install it. You can just go to uh, search Google for Oracle VirtualBox. Okay, there we go. All right, so here's my uh, VirtualBox. I do have several other boxes installed. Um, but uh, you want to start with a clean installation of Kali Linux. You could probably, you know, if you already have Kali Linux up and running, uh, you can probably use these same steps to get it working too. But I will show you these steps for uh, a clean installation of Kali Linux. Uh, so first we would go to, let's go to Kali Linux. Um, and uh, you're going to want to navigate to the virtual machines, uh, appliances that you can download. And we are downloading for VirtualBox. So you click on that and it starts downloading the OVA file. I've already got downloaded, so I don't need to keep downloading it. Uh, but once you have that file downloaded on your system, then you can go back to VirtualBox and Import Appliance, and we'll navigate to that folder, which for me it's in Downloads, and it's Kali Linux. Hit Next. And we can leave pretty much all the default settings. I am going to change the name to Kali uh, Panda Demo. And hit Import. I'm going to agree. And now it's going to import. Um, it's not going to take the full two minutes, uh, maybe, maybe a minute. Okay, now we have our uh, Kali Panda demo virtual box installed. Uh, before we do anything else, when you get this uh, dongle in the mail, uh, open it up and make sure that you, get it, you can get it installed and operating on your host system. In my case, I'm using Windows 10. Uh, it was plug and play. I was able to plug it in. Uh, my system recognized it, and I was able to connect to my home network. Once you've done that, however, you need to go in and then disable it uh, as a connection in your in your system. Uh, you do not want it to, because if you've got it in there and it's recognized it and you've connected to systems, when you plug it in, Windows is going to recognize it and it's going to try to uh, use it as a network connection. It's going to go ahead and enable it, and then the operating system, your host operating system, is going to kind of take control of it. You don't want the host operating system to take control of it. So make sure you disable it, um, and uh, then you can proceed. Now, before we go anywhere uh, with running Kali. We want to put the device back in if it's not already in, make sure it's disabled. Um, uh, once it's disabled, we can go to uh, the, choose your instance, Kali Panda Demo, click on settings. And these are all the settings that you have for this instance uh, of, a, of a virtual mach virtual machine. You can change the name if you want, change the type, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you've got a bunch of advanced features here. System, you can change the base memory that's allocated to that virtual machine. Uh, processor, you can change how many cores it gets access to. Um, display, you don't need you don't need to change any of these things for this Kali appliance uh, that you get downloaded from Kali Linux. Uh, it comes um, pretty much uh, set up out of the box. 
but you do want to go to network and make sure that enable network adapter is selected. It should be by default, but if it's not, make sure that this is enabled. If this is not enabled, you're not going to be able to use uh, the device. And then go to USB. And this is the, this is the key step here. Um, you have to add the device uh, as a device that the virtual machine can access. For, in my case, I had to check USB 3.0. I tried it once with 2.0, and I think that, that was actually causing problems where it wasn't allowing me to actually use the device. I don't know if the device is actually a USB 3.0 device, uh, but I had to enable USB 3.0 to get it to work. So choose USB 3.0. Down here is this. These are the filtered devices that your virtual machine can see. Currently, we have we have none. So if we go to plus, and you can choose the USB devices that your system uh, sees. Uh, we're going to choose Raylink. Raylink is. Uh, the name of the uh, card that's actually inside of the Panda uh, dongle. So we choose Raylink. Now, if we click on settings for that, it's going to show us uh, vendor ID, product ID, revision, and all these all these other things. And that is what uh, your VM, it's what your virtual box is actually going to filter on to give your virtual machine access to. So we want to we, we're we're going to want to actually uh, remove a lot of this stuff. I think that we're probably fine if we leave it. But some, some of the people online have su suggested that you need to uh, zero out like manufacturer and revision and product ID that that helps, helps it to find the device. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a blank one. And we're going to go to settings. And we're going to put in that vendor ID, which is, um, you may want to write this down, 148F. Now, this is maybe going to be different for yours than it is for mine. So mine's 148F. And then the product ID is 5372. Remote, we want to we'll just say no. Uh, name is going to be Panda and array link. Okay, and so now that we have that as, as a device filter, and we can delete the other one. Hit OK. Now, we're going to actually pull the dongle out um, because we want to we want to load up our virtual machine and get that set up before we plug it back in and have it recognized. So I'm going to go ahead and pull, pull the dongle out. Okay, so the dongle is now out. Now we can start up uh, Kali Linux, this instance, for the first time. So we just... Select the box, click start, and it's going to load up the virtual machine. It loaded up on my other monitor, so let's pull it over here. And let's choose Kali. Out of all of the Linux installations I've used, uh, Kali has been the most beautiful. Uh, it's so well configured for using uh, with VirtualBox uh, that you're not going to probably even want to use the other ones. Um, Red Hat and CentOS are good but they're just not as smooth of a setup. Uh, Kali is really just designed for people who want to, you know, quickly play around with these tools and not deal with like a full full installation um, process. The default username is Kali. The default password is Kali. And boom, we are set up with a full installation of Kali Linux on a virtual machine. Uh, takes it a second to recognize the change in resolution, and there we go. All right, so first thing that we want to do is we want to bring up a terminal window. <clears throat> Control-Alt-T, or you can choose it from the menu. And we are going to want to update the system. And Kelly. This is just going to make sure that you have everything up to date before we proceed. Okay, now we're good to go. Now, uh, when I put the dongle back in, <clears throat> and we should be good to go, I hope, now, on the bottom right, I want you to look at, if you can see my, my cursor here, or my, my mouse pointer, there's this little, what looks like a little USB adapter. We're going to kind of focus on that when I plug it in. It's going to start, uh, so long as everything's working, it's going to start flashing red and green lights. Uh, red alone um, is not as good as uh, red and green. Green indicates that it's it's properly connecting. Uh, red indicates that there may be a problem, and, I, and that's, that's one of the symptoms I was having when I had uh, USB 2.0 selected. So now I'm going to plug the dongle back in, and hopefully... Hopefully, it recognizes it. Oh, we got red lights and red. Uh, and now we've got some green. We've got green and red. Uh, and uh, we should be good. Now, if we go up to our network settings here, click on the network box here, uh, we've got a wired connection, which I'm actually going to disconnect from. And we've got now what we see, though, under Wi-Fi network. So it says it's disconnected, but we have available networks. This is my home network here. If I click on that, we should be able to actually access uh, that home network. Uh, that's going to be the uh, password for the home network. And it looks like we're good to go. So let's uh, start Firefox. 
and see if we can actually access the internet. Okay, let's go to Google. And we are able to access Google. And again, you wanna make sure that you've disconnected any other networks because the only network that you wanna be accessing the internet through is your, um, is uh, the one that's associated with the Panda dongle. So we're good to go, we were able to get to Google. Uh, the next step, just to make sure that everything's set up and working, um, is that we are gonna want to, uh, let's, let's first go to, let's go back to our terminal window and do iwconfig, which is gonna show us our, open this up over here a little bit and go, scroll here. Okay, so LO is just your loop back. ETH0 is, is my ethernet connection, which I've um, disconnected from the networks. And then WLAN0 is uh, associated with our dongle. And you'll see here that it's actually connected to Fios, uh, to my home network. Mode is managed. Uh, managed mode is indicating that uh, it's, you know, the operating system is, is using it to connect to the internet. And uh, we're going to want to actually disable that because we want to make sure that we're able to use this in monitor mode, which is probably why you're buying the dongle in the first place. Uh, if you're using this for, um, you know, regular web surfing, you're probably going to want to get a better dongle or a different dongle. Uh, this one is really uh, mostly purchased for um, network monitoring, Wi-Fi monitoring to be able to do ethical hacking type things. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll just disconnect from that network. Um, we can um, we can run sudo uh, airmon ng check. And what that's going to do is it's going to show us um, what processes we may have in, uh, that are running that could um, cause us some potential problems. And you see we've got network manager running and WPA supplicant running. And, and we don't want those running. So we're going to do sudo airmon ng check kill and that's going to kill those processes. So now if we run sudo airmon ng again, check, without kill, it's going to show clean. It's gonna say, say that there's nothing running. Let's go ahead and clear this so you can see it better. All right, uh, next thing that we can do is we can go ahead and start network monitoring. So sudo airmon ng start wlan zero. What that's gonna do is just start network monitoring on that wireless network card. And now if we typed iwconfig again, you see how the network name has changed. It's no longer WLAN0, it's now WLAN0mon, which means it's in monitoring mode. From there, we can go to sudo uh, Wireshark. And that's gonna run Wireshark. Uh, and in Wireshark, we now see ETH0, which is flatlined. This little little bit here is actually the, the graph for monitoring. You want little spikes. Spikes show that there's actual network activity. So ETH is off, so it's not gonna show any spikes. But WLAN zero monitor, monitoring is actually showing these spikes. So if we double click on that row, give it a second, you should start seeing network traffic appear. And we do. Um, there's not much going on. Uh, I believe most of my family's gone right now, so there aren't gonna be a lot of uh, devices connecting. But if you look at the source here, Ecobee, for example, that is my um, my wireless, my Wi-Fi thermostat. So you can see that connecting to the network. We're seeing some other devices now too. Okay. Um, so we are now up and running and we've got the Panda Wi-Fi dongle working and we should be good to go. Now you should be able to proceed with any other um, tools or activities that you want to. And that's how you get it running on your VirtualBox instance of Kali Linux. So it does work. Anyway, I hope that this helps and gives you a little bit of confidence in this pretty cheap uh, Wi-Fi dongle. Uh, again, 22 bucks, 18 bucks, whatever it is uh, going at on Amazon. You can get this dongle and you can um, you know, get VirtualBox installed for free. You can get the Kali Linux appliance for free. And then with the other... 18 to $22 for the Wi-Fi dongle, you're up and running and uh, learning a little bit of uh, ethical hacking.